So you're getting into the world of lasers and you've seen cheaper diode lasers and CO2 lasers, and now you're starting to see fiber lasers and you're asking yourself, do I need to get one? In this video, we're gonna walk through what a fiber laser is, what it can do and how it compares specifically to a CO2 laser cutter. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so behind me is a 30 watt fiber laser. And this one's actually from Cloudray, specifically the name is kind of long. It's the CF 30 watt split laser MOPA GPT M7 with an external screen. And we'll go through what all that means here in a little bit. But all you really need to know is this is a different type of machine when you compare it versus a diode or a CO2 laser. And probably the biggest difference with these machines versus any other ones out there is fiber lasers allow you to engrave directly onto metal. So in the past, we talked about how you can engrave tumblers by removing the powder coating off the top, or sometimes you can engrave stainless steel, but with a machine like this, you can go directly onto the actual metal itself. It also opens you up to a bunch of different materials as well. So right off the bat, when you're trying to figure out if you need to get one of these machines, you really need to be asking yourself, what is the actual job I'm trying to do with this? And if it has to do with anything with raw metal, you're gonna wanna look at a fiber machine. But there's actually a bunch of other benefits as well, and to get into those, we need to get into how this actually works. And now a quick caveat, I am by no means an expert in laser physics or any of that kind of stuff. This is mostly just the research I do online. And then more practically for you is how it actually impacts how you work with the machine in terms of how fast it is, the types of stuff that you can do. Now this machine is a little bit different because we have this screen. So kind of ignore the screen for now. So with most of these machines, you're going to have some type of controller box like this. And then this guy, which is where the actual laser beam is coming out of. And the lens is actually right here. So this is a rail back here that this entire unit moves up and down. But to talk about the beam itself, it's actually created right here with the controller box. And basically it's using a bunch of laser diodes and it's pumping it through a fiber optic cable, which is the flexible cable that you can see on the back end of this thing. At the end of that cable, there are some rare earth materials and that adjusts and filters the beam so you get certain frequencies. And then once it comes out of that fiber tube, it comes right here where it focuses through a lens and comes right down through the bottom. And that's compared to a CO2 machine, which actually has a big glass tube on the back where that gets bounced around a bunch of different mirrors and then focuses down. And that's compared to more of the open gantry style diode machines, which still do actually have laser diodes inside of it, but they're still attached to a gantry that moves everything around. And you can see with this one, we don't have a gantry because inside of this unit right here is a galvo system, which moves a mirror and the beam will reflect through that down onto your workpiece. And that's how the beam actually moves. Now, because of that, a fiber machine is a lot faster than a gantry style diode or CO2 machine. Okay, so that's like the physics of this thing, but like practically, how do you use it? And it's actually pretty easy. And actually with this unit, it's got the screen built in and it's running a version of EasyCAD that all runs locally. You can also use third-party software with Lightburn. Actually with this one, I have a different card that I could put in. But in terms of the machine itself, once you kind of have it connected and you have it turned on, next step is going to be placing your material on your actual work bed. And this aluminum work bed has a bunch of threaded holes as well as as these little bars that you can screw down in different locations. And that basically lets you create a jig because people a lot of times are marking multiple parts. And because it does it so fast, having a jig just to be able to insert it and take it out, it's really easy. So you take something like this little card, you could drop it in. Then the next step would be actually focus the laser. They make it really easy. These two little guys right here are actually red laser beams. And as I'm moving my hand down, you can see they're getting closer and closer together. So basically, once you get it on your material, you turn this dial at the top to move this up and down. And when those dots come together, it is focused. It's actually a super easy manual way to focus the machine versus a CO2 laser or a diode laser, we're gonna have to actually measure the distance, whether you're putting a block underneath it or with like the X-Tool D1, it's got a little lever that drops down. And then from there, you just bring in whatever you want to engrave. It's got a tracing function where you can actually see an entire outline of your image before you fire it. And because this is running so fast, it almost looks like a real outline picture that it's creating. And then once everything is lined up, then you just run it. Now this unit specifically also comes with a rotary that I don't have set up, but I am planning on making a future video showing the rotary itself, just because it's its own whole thing. And it's got a foot switch, which is super handy. You can just connect it to the back. And then you, once you hit the switch, it fires the laser. And because it goes so fast, you can do repeat parts really quick. In fact, I was having to laser engrave a bunch of little keys with a little logo on it. And I was able to crank through like 200 keys in about like 15, 20 minutes. So coming back to the original question, why would you get this versus a CO2 laser? And it's because a fiber laser is just more. And there's several mores that it is. And the first one is more 
speed. Like we've talked about, this is a galvanometer. This isn't a physical gantry, so you're not limited by the physics of moving a laser head around a work area. All it's having to do is move a mirror, which you can do much, much faster. Specifically with this machine, you can get up to speeds of 2000 millimeters per second. With CO2 lasers, you usually will see them in the 500 to 600 millimeters per second range, and the higher end will get you up to a thousand. So normally this is about four times faster than a CO2 machine. This is also going to give you more precision. We won't get deep into the science of all of it, but basically just the way the laser beam is generated, you get a more consistent beam. Usually you're going to get a much more consistent engrave with a fiber machine. Now, one of the biggest ones is you're going to be able to use more materials. Not really more materials because this really isn't great for wood and MDF and stuff. You probably use a CO2 machine before, but more materials in terms of metals as well as specific fiber machines lets you do acrylics and plastics that you just can't do with another type of machine. The next thing is more life. Pretty much all the lasers have some type of consumable. It's usually the CO2 tube or the actual diode lasers themselves. For the CO2 machines, you're normally in the 10,000 hours range before you need to replace it. Not the entire machine, but just the actual glass tube itself. With this guy, it's more like a hundred thousand hours before you're gonna to have to do some replacement. So much more life and normally the warranties are also gonna reflect that as well. And visually probably the biggest more is more portability just in the fact that this is a smaller unit especially when you don't have the screen attached to it. This is easier to move around than a big CO2 machine but that also is really the big limitation with these machines is you're limited to a pretty small work area and if you want to see specifics for the machines you're looking at I definitely encourage you guys to check out CloudRay's website. This one you're only looking at about eight inches by eight inches versus even the desktop CO2 machines where you're like 25 inches by 20 inches or somewhere in that range. So much, much, much smaller. This is definitely made for working with smaller projects. And then the last thing, which really isn't a pro, but it is a more, and that is more money. Generally speaking, a fiber machine is going to be more expensive than a CO2 machine. In fact, I just checked on CloudRay's website. You're really not gonna get something under $2,500 where you definitely can buy diode machines that are much, much cheaper than that. And sometimes even CO2 machines, you can get cheaper than that with more power and more work area. But again, this is just a whole different type of technology. So those prices haven't come down quite as quick as the diode gantries and the CO2 machines. Now these machines do really great if you're set up in a custom engraving environment where people are sending you a bunch of different parts that they're wanting to put part numbers or logos or even names on. And a great way to advertise those is with a website, which brings us to this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one solution to establish your brand and identity and website online. When I first got started pretty much putting anything online, it was through Squarespace. And that's just because it's super, super easy to get going. You can set up a blog, whether you're wanting to do more of a content site where you're writing big blog articles, they have a great integration for that. Actually hosted the Make or Break show, which I did a while back, it was directly through Squarespace. And then they even have an e-commerce add-on to where if you were using a machine like this to actually sell services or actually sell physical products, you can do it all directly from there. And they've got a bunch of different templates to get you set up and going quick. I definitely encourage you guys to check it out if you haven't before. And you actually can sign up for a free trial at my link down below. And if you do decide you want to open up whatever business you're deciding to start, you can also use that link to save on a domain or a hosting package. All right, let's get back into the video. Now, this machine is actually a good bit more than $2,500. This is like forty six dollars to $5,000, depending on the discounts that you're looking at. And the big reason for that, other than the screen that I keep talking about, is the flavor of fiber laser this is. This is actually a MOPA laser laser. And that's compared to the more standard Q-switched machines that you might have seen before. And MOPA stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. And basically what that means is you get a lot more ability to adjust the laser beam itself versus a more standard Q-switched machine. And what that practically means for you is you can engrave a wider range of materials. Specifically, if you want to do like black engraves on aluminum, you're going to have to use a MOPA style machine, but also lets you do different types of plastics and acrylics that you couldn't do with a standard machine. And that's all because how the laser beam is generated itself. So for the most part with lasers, you've got your power, which all of these can adjust, but then you have your frequency and your pulse width. And those last two, you have a much wider range with a MOPA. On the frequency side of things, you can adjust it between one and 4,000 kilohertz versus 30 to 60 kilohertz on those cheaper Q-switched machines. And on the pulse width, you're looking at a range between two to 350 nanoseconds versus 30 to 60 nanoseconds with Q switched. Okay, so coming back to my original question, should you buy a CO2 machine or a fiber machine? And like with pretty much everything on this channel, it always comes back to it depends. And it depends on the job that you're actually trying to get this to do. Specifically, if you're trying to engrave metal, small parts quickly, a fiber machine is definitely the route that you need to go 
Again, you can kind of get the marking metal effect by using special sprays or even using stainless steel with a CO2 machine or a diode machine. But if you're actually doing real metal parts and you're trying to crank out a ton of them, this would be the direction to go. And then kind of the question within the question, like what machine do I need to get? Again, it depends. I would really only look at a MOBA machine if the type of materials that you need to engrave just aren't supported by the cheaper Q-switched versions. Because currently a MOPA laser for the same wattage is gonna be like twice the amount. So if you need it, you need it. But if you're just kind of getting into it, some of the cheaper Q-switched versions are good. And if you're picking one up, I definitely encourage you guys to check out Cloudray. They really have probably the most robust amount of options and they've been around for a really long time. Now, actually, before you go, a quick channel update. You may have noticed like my frequency of videos hasn't been as high recently. And that's basically because I've run out of space in this two car garage. And there is a big thing that is happening very, very soon. In fact, I'm in a new space with a lot more room for activities. What this really means is I'm going to be able to crank out these reviews faster. So I'm going to be able to have these machines set up pretty much all the time. What I would love to know from you is the type of questions and the type of machines you would like to see me review or check out in the future. And as always, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.